Hi, my name is Francis Jeffrey, and I'm a technical support engineer with Rapid Recovery, and today I'll be going over how to resolve repositories full issues. Topics we'll be going over today is how to extend the repository, changing the retention policy, archiving recovery points, deleting recovery points, and deleting the repository. The first topic we'll be going over is extending the repository. This is likely the easiest and quickest way to resolve the repository is full issue. Um, if you have storage available and you can extend the repository, that is likely the best and quickest way to get you back up and running. Keep in mind that once you create a repository extent, uh, this is a permanent solution, so you cannot just delete one extent from a repository. Uh, once an extent is added to the repository, both storage locations have to be online uh, or th three or four extents uh, have to be online for the repository to be online and mounted. So to extend the repository, uh, you'll select the more option, select repositories, click on the gear, click add storage location, enter the data path, and the meta path of the location. Select the amount of space. I'm just going to create a small temporary one. And then once this gets created, it will allocate uh, the storage right away. So then you can go ahead and perform many backups or um, do what you need. Uh, seeing as you won't have a repository full once the space gets added. So as you can see here, I've got one extent, my main extent, and then the new extent I made here. The next topic we'll be going over is the retention policy. Um, once again, you'll be selecting the more option up here, then going to retention policies. Um, in here, this goes over um, how your retention policy is set up. So uh, ultimately, I'm keeping uh, data for two months. Um, let's say, for example, um, you have been keeping data for one year. Um, what I would recommend doing in this case would be, I would say, uh, let's remove this last bucket and maybe switching this bucket to let's say something like six months or even four months um, whatever it is that you can change it to um, to try and purge out some of the older backups to make room for the new backups um, would be ideal um, keep in mind that once you make a change here to the retention policy this won't take effect until rollups are ran on the core or agent. Um, every core has nightly jobs configured. So if you check settings in nightly jobs, by default, they normally run at 12 or 1 a.m. And the roll-up job is part of that. So uh, ideally, if you let the nightly jobs run, uh, it will purge out the old data and then free up space. You can also force roll-ups by going into um, the machine, selecting more, going to the retention policy, and then uh, doing a force roll-up. You can also um, change your retention policy on a per machine basis. Keep in mind that when a custom retention policy is configured for a specific machine, that the custom policy overwrites the core policy. So by default, um, the machine will override the core. So if your core is set to keep for a year, but you have a custom retention policy to keep for two years, then the specific uh, machine that has the two years configured will uh, supersede the core and that specific machine will have two years of data versus everything else will have a year or if they have other retention policies. The next topic we'll be going over is how to archive off recovery points. Archiving recovery points, um, what that does is it takes recovery points from the existing repository 
and stores them as a flat file on a separate storage location. So the idea is, is that once you archive off, let's say, a specific recovery point chain, that you can then delete that from the repository as you have a copy of it in an archive. And if you ever needed to, you can always mount or go back to that, that archive to access the needed recovery points. To create an archive, we select archive at the top of the core console. Use one time archive, put in the path. You can either do local uh, network or cloud. Click next, select the machine. We're going to leave everything uh, default here. And then we can select the date range for our archive to be created. So we will archive off a month of data here. And we'll click finish. And then you will see that a task gets created in the top of your screen. And it goes through and shows how much data is going to be archived. It gives you um, the total amount of data. Uh, start time, remaining, your transfer rate, and all that good stuff. Once the archive is complete, we can do a check to make sure that it uh, attaches properly. Uh, under the archive, there's a little drop down. We can select attach archive, change the type to local, we'll call it archive, and put in the path here, and click attach. Once it uh, completes, it'll, yep, there we go, it's completed and we can see our archive here and we can see all the recovery points here as well. So that's a good sign that this archive is good and in working order. The next topic we'll be going over is deleting recovery points. I want to start off by stating that when you select recovery points for deletion, um, so for example, if you're deleting two terabytes of data, um, that data doesn't get deleted right away. So you won't see that space be reclaimed from the repository. Customers assume that when you select two terabytes of data to get deleted, that you should see that data uh, be removed from the repository right away. However, we've got a task that runs in the background. It is called delete RPFS jobs. Um, you have to select the events and then click on services and if you do a RPFS uh, search uh, I have none because I haven't deleted anything but you should see multiple uh, RPFS jobs get spawned uh, and unfortunately until all of the RPFS jobs get uh, completed that space will not be reclaimed so we it's a bit of a time-consuming process sometimes because Terabytes of data can take uh, hours or days sometimes to delete. Um, so it's not a quick uh, fix per se. To delete recovery points, you need to select the machine, click on recovery points, and then at the top of the screen, you or the top of the recovery points, you have a delete range option. If you select delete range, it will give you a date range to choose to delete um, recovery points from. I've chosen my date range and I'm going to go ahead and select delete. Click OK to the pop-up. It's just warning you. And a running task will get created in the top right. You can go ahead and click on it and it'll show you the progress of what's being deleted. Now my, ta or my task has been completed and I can refresh my page and the images for that time frame should be deleted. So the deletion went through and I just want to show you guys um, the events now. So if you click on up here in the top right your services, you should see here now a bunch of delete index RPFS files. So like I was saying before, these jobs have to be created and completed in full before you start seeing the space be reclaimed on your repository. 
the last topic I want to talk to you guys about is deleting the repository. I know this may not be applicable for all customers. However, if um, possible, deleting the repository is probably the quickest way to resolve uh, a repository full issue. However, um, totally understand if that's not something that you can do. If, uh, if it is the case, you just have to go to the repositories dashboard in here. You would select the drop down menu and click delete. Keep in mind that this will delete the volume or format the volume in which the repository is created on and it gives you a warning with regards to that. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and delete my repository and just show you guys what it looks like. So there should be a running task in the top. Once again, it just shows you the progress and how long it's going to take to do that. And now the repository has been deleted and we can go ahead and recreate our repository. Go ahead and just leave the repository name as default. We're gonna go ahead and click on add storage location, put in my paths here. and then select how big I want to create my repository, save it, and then it goes ahead and creates the repository over again. Once this has been recreated, you will have free space available immediately and you can go ahead with creating um, the new recovery points for your servers. To learn more about rapid recovery, please visit support.quest.com. For quick questions, follow us on Twitter at QuestExperts.